I'm Jill and I'm a training developer here at Looker. If you're new to Looker and not sure where to start, we have a number of great video tutorials on getting started that you may want to check out before watching this video. So let's say we've been viewing reports in Looker that others have created, but we have some additional questions that haven't been answered. In this video, we're going to talk about using Looker to explore data and find the answers to those questions. But before we jump into Looker, let's learn some of the concepts you'll need to know first. Let's say we're working for an e-commerce store and we're looking at the clothing in our inventory. We'll start with a pile of clothes, just like you'll be starting with a pile of data. Keep in mind this is just an example, and if we used full-size clothing, we'd probably fill up this entire room. It goes without saying that looking at this pile isn't very helpful. One of the first things we might think to do to make sense of this is to start grouping things into smaller piles. I can see common characteristics such as types of clothing, so I might start separating shirts from pants and shoes. So, now we have a pile of shirts, pants, and shoes, and we can start to make better sense of the clothing according to its type. We could do the very same thing according to color. This concept of grouping things together is something that we do every day, and it's a fundamental concept when it comes to working with data. It's important to remember that you can group things by more than one attribute at the same time. For example, we could create groups by both type and color. Now every combination of type and color has its own pile, like red shoes or blue shirts. In Looker, these characteristics we're grouping by, such as type and color, are called dimensions. So this concept of grouping is great, but we'll probably want to know things about these groups as well. One common thing we'd want to know is accounts. How many do we have? Looking at our piles again, we see that there are three pairs of black shoes, four blue shirts, and all of our other counts. There are lots of other things we might want to know about these groups too. For example, maybe we want to find the total or average price of these piles. We can do that too. In Looker, these calculations are referred to as measures. So now, let's see how these concepts apply to Looker. There are a couple different ways you can start exploring data in Looker. You could click Explore from here on a dashboard or a look. Another common method is to use the Explore menu. Most of the time, it's pretty easy to find the option that you're interested in, but if you ever get confused, just ask one of your Looker admins where they would suggest to start. In this case, we'll choose Inventory Items. When you first look at this page, it may seem like there are a lot of different options, but it's really no more complicated than the grouping and the counting that we just saw. The important part of the screen is on the left, where you'll see we have dimensions and measures. Anytime we want to group in Looker, we'll use a dimension. Let's think back to our piles grouped by color. In Looker, we just choose the color dimension by clicking on it. After we click Run, you'll see we get a list of all the colors, which exactly matches our piles. You might also remember when we grouped by both type and color at the same time. We can do this in Looker too by finding and clicking the type dimension, then clicking Run again. So remember, anytime you want to group things together, look for a dimension. Keep in mind that when we group by a dimension, Looker will display unique values or unique combinations of values. For example, we see a row for black pants, black shoes, and so forth. But now, like before, we might want to know things about these groups. Anytime we want to know something about a group, we'll use a measure. Remember when we wanted to get a count of each group? In Looker, we can add the count measure by clicking it and hitting Run again. We could also add the total retail price measure to see the total price of each group. And that's really all there is to it. Once you master this idea of grouping and how it relates to dimensions and measures, you're well on your way to answering any question you have without needing someone to do it for you. But before we wrap up, 
Let's take a look at another Explorer that might be more similar to your company's looker. Unlike our simple Explore page about our pile of clothing, this one is about all the orders that our company has received. As you can see on this one, we now have a few more sections. The same exact concepts about dimensions and measures still apply here. We just have more dimensions and measures, so they've been broken up into sections to make them easier to find. If you ever want to search through a long list of dimensions and measures, just type into the search box. Even though this is a more complex explore, we can still group our data using dimensions and do calculations on these groupings using measures. For example, we could pull up a count of orders by created date. We're grouping the data by created date, so created date is our dimension, and we're counting the number of orders placed on each date, so count is our measure. And that's it. Once you master the concepts in this video, you'll be able to answer your own questions and make new discoveries to excel at your job. Feel free to play around in your own Looker instance to help these ideas sink in. If you ever can't find a dimension or measure that you want, be sure to reach out to your Looker developer. They might need to create the one you're looking for, or they may have named it differently than you expect. Working with your admins is a great way to help them develop the most complete, easiest Looker experience. To learn how to filter your data or how to turn it into graphs and charts, you can check out other videos which you'll find here. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.